When I talk about how we hold our reins and how we want to set our upper body, I like to start teaching a triangular shape that we make with our rein. How I get that information across is through uh, the visual of a pizza slice. What I really want is a triangular shape between our hands and the point of the pizza, which is the horse's nose. So what we're doing is we're creating angles for this horse to be able to flex and move his neck inside this shape that we've set. Now there's a progression that I like to have riders go through with their hands. The first stage, I like to have riders have their hands just outside their hips, no lower than their hip bones. Okay, so above the hip bones. Riders can ride thumb up or thumb pointing towards each other. I prefer to start with thumbs pointing towards each other like I'm riding a mountain bike. What happens when we hold our hands like this, we actually increase the angle on our pizza. So if she's riding with her hands on her bike handlebars, this is where our rein comes out, creating this angle. If she does thumb up, you can see that this rein then moves in about an inch and a half, and that decreases the angle on her pizza. So the progression I like to have is bike handlebars, so flat hands, and then once my horse is good and balanced in all their maneuvers that I want them to be, I'm gonna narrow up the crust of my pizza a little bit. And it's only a little bit. And then I spend time training in that frame until that horse is balanced and confident in this frame. And then I keep narrowing up. Now, as I get a little narrower, I'm going to start bringing my thumbs up because what happens is eventually I wanna to go to one hand. So that progression is very slow and it takes a lot of time and we need to be very steady at whatever pizza width we choose and we need to be diligent with our training and make sure that that horse is very solid in their balance and their education. Next piece, we wanna talk about our dance frame. And this is very important to a horse's progression and training. So I wanna talk about the shoulder, the hand, and the point of pull always being in a straight line. Now, depending on what bit you have in your horse, okay, with a shank bit, the point of pull moves lower. So the point of pull is where your rein attaches to your bit. In a snaffle, it's right in the corner of the mouth. And then when you add shank, it goes down to the length of the shank. So I always want to have that in a straight line. So this is where Haley's hands need to be up a little higher. So here is her hip bone. So they should be just above her hip bone. Now you can see we have a straight line, shoulder, hand, point of pull. No matter what shape I have on my horse and what geometry I'm doing, I wanna maintain this dance frame. So common mistakes I see with this is hands get too low. Okay, and as soon as my hands get too low, they're dropped below my hip bones. Okay, that line is broken. Other side of that is the hands get too high. We've broken the line. Probably the most common habit I see from riders is actually bringing their hand into their belly button to make corrections. Now, as soon as I bring this hand inside in front of my belly button, I've really broken this line and horses really don't understand that line. As I progress leading up into one-handed riding, I don't wanna change the angle, I'm just gonna change the distance between my hands. So the size of that pizza crust. So as she's progressing through her training, she's gonna narrow up, narrow up, narrow up, narrow up, and then go into one hand with her left hand. And then from here, she hasn't changed the angle. Point of pull hand, shoulder. And it's very important we maintain that angle. If we ride with our hands too low and we do all of our training down here, okay, so here's the angle that she's trained her horse on. And then she goes into one hand. You can already see all of a sudden that hand moved from down here up to here. And that's, that's way too much of a difference in the angle for this horse to understand. So if we train, back to two hands, if we train on this angle, now go to one hand. 
see that angle didn't change. And that's an important piece of the puzzle for progressing horses through into one hand. When we're holding our reins, you want to hold your reins in what I call your lobster claws. So you have most of your contact on your reins in these two fingers. These three fingers contain your horse. That's where you want to do all your fine tuning and talk very quietly with your horse. If you hold your rein with pinky or ring finger, if we hold low, it makes it very difficult to adjust our reins. Also, when we grip low in our hand, we add tension in our tricep. Can you feel that? Yeah. If we grip with our lobster claws, there should be no muscle engagement in your arm. So it's a nice, soft, light feel. If it's one thing I say more than anything else, it's shorten your reins. I want to hold my rein and then walk my three fingers down my rein. Pinch, walk, pinch, walk. When I'm teaching, I refer to this as a caterpillar. So I wanna just kinda of inch my fingers down that rein. Go ahead and try that. Grab, slide, grab, slide. Now don't open your fingers. Pinch. Try and do it so nobody can see it. This takes a lot of practice and I encourage people to practice doing this as they're warming up, as they're cooling down. The common ways I see people adjust their reins to shorten them is by using their off side hand. So they come across, grab the rein and pull it shorter using this outside hand. Now let's shorten left rein. What happens when we use this outside hand, we have lost our pizza slice. So we have lost our frame and we have lost that connection with our horse, okay? The other way I see people do it is, I'm just drop this hand, is they throw the reins to themselves, okay? But every time I throw the reins and try and shorten them, it sends a big communication down this rein and it, it bounces and he can feel that. The quieter we can be while we're adjusting means less communication, it's crisp, it's clear, and I don't alter my pizza slice and my dance frame. The idea is when you're riding is that you're communicating with your horse, but no one can see it. So I want everything to be really fine tuned and quiet. Pinch, pass it off. There you go. Now see if you can get him to flex, keep shortening. Good. Maintaining level shoulders, pizza slice, your hands didn't move. When you get better at that, you can then add that to all sorts of shapes and geometry.